Hi there, Bobs. Hey! I just got to see a couple episodes of Monsters at Work, a show I had been waiting for since about what year is it? Uh, about 18 years or so. Okay. Um, and it, it after 18 years of, of hype and anticipation, I think it definitely scratched that itch that I had been waiting for for so long. Thank you. I've been I've been on it. I've been working. I've been working on it for over three years. So I appreciate that. When you and when you commit to, uh, in animation, when you commit to something, it's a it's a big commitment. Well, actually, let, let's let's jump into that. Like, did you get to use assets and backgrounds and environments from the movies, or did you have to build everything from the ground up for this new for the show in terms uh, of assets? From, in regards to assets, uh, very, um, we rebuilt everything. Um, my, my joke is, I think all the original stuff's on floppy disks. I mean, that's my, <laughs> it's not really, but it's literally like, um, but what's great is Pixar provided us with um, um, much of the development art from the original films. Um, so not only um, could we look and see how the sort of iterative process of how they got to where they got, um, but we could also explore maybe building a few things that they hadn't built in the, in the shows. For example, the Mift cart, the cart they drive, that's actually a design uh, that was a Monsters, Inc. design that was not used. Hmm. I don't want to say abandoned. It's just the story didn't ask for it. So, um, so they were very generous in, in providing that. That said, from a technical standpoint, you know, it's 20 years later. The way they did things back then is, is quite impressive. Um, but with today's technology, we were able to, you know, we, there's a, it's still challenging. Groom and all those things are very challenging. But um, we were able to sort of re rebuild the world. Sure. Um, tell me a little bit about deciding, like, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it w goes way back, but when did you decide to create a new character, Tyler, versus doing the continued adventures of Sully and Mike? They're, they're in it, definitely big parts, but at least in the first two episodes that I've seen, they're supporting roles. Right. The original concept was always... Look, I've worked on a lot of series that are translated from features into series. And sometimes you do just, it's more, it's continuing adventures with. Um, in this case, um, the, from the very early beginnings, the idea was to not recreate the movie um, as a series, but to expand the world with a new group of characters. And Pete was very supportive of that. Um, but also he's like, you know, create your new character, expand the world and create your new characters and let's fall in love with a, a new group while we get to spend time and visit with our, our, our old friends. So that was the concept from the beginning. The getting to the very simple idea, it sounds so simple, sort of the notes, bum, 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 bum. I'm sure those are very simple notes, but I'm not sure that was why the first choice. It's so, so it, it, film and, and animation is very iterative and getting to the simple idea of what happened to a, a monster that's wanted to be a scare all his life and shows up at Monsters Inc. the day it switches. It seems like an obvious idea. It took us, I think, a year just to get to that. Um, but that's when you do lots of exploration and then you, 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 and you try to figure it out. So um, that just seemed like the great stories are told when there's lots of change in the world. And Zach, uh, I think, especially in the Pixar world storytelling, you really don't start the plot until you care until you're invested in the main character. So the idea of having a character that sort of the universe throws him a curveball, that's unfair, and he has to kind of figure it out seemed like the, the way to go. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just from the jump, like I hadn't seen any of the trailers or, or marketing, you know, because I was already in. So it wasn't like I, it wasn't like it went past me. I was right. just like, I don't need to see it. I'm already in. Let's just go. I'm, I'm down. Uh, and I was so taken aback by that first half of the first episode like I, I wasn't sure what I was expecting but I was so hooked by that you know people are resistant to uh not to be political or anything no. but the alternative energy right oh. it's a new it's a whole new world right and it's reflected in the show so well and you've got this incredible cast of new and returning characters I mean I don't know it for a fact but I know that in a matter of weeks uh, everyone in my house is just going to be walking around saying, Mifter! <laughs> oh, Henry, yes. <laughs> He's fantastic. Is he someone who just, um, you just let him loose? Or is he a by-the-book kind of actor? No, actually, almost, 
I think the entire cast is very collaborative. Um, it's super important. There are, you know, there are actors that are great. They're great actors who are very respectful. And they, they, they want to do as written, which is fine. Um, we're very, the script is just a jumping off point to the continued elevation and iteration of the story. And having actors that you can ad lib with. Um, and I pretty much read against them all the scenes mm -hmm. and we just play. And so I know this show, I know this at that point, I know this show well enough to know where it's going, but I'm not gonna be handcuffed by that. If a great idea happens, we're just gonna go with it and we'll just figure it out. So we keep working on the stories up until you know the last minute. But yeah, having Ben Feldman, Mindy, Henry, uh, and Lucas Neff, who does Duncan, is fantastic. Alana Ubach, um, who was you know in Coco, she's fantastic. All of them were ad libbing, and I have a very fantastic editor named Dan Molina who takes all of that wonderful dialogue and then goes and shuffles it and creates hopefully conversations that feel real and not written. Hmm. That's fantastic. I mean, I think a lot of people don't acknowledge or realize how much energy goes into making animated dialogue sound believable. It's but it's for seamless. the most part, you know, Zach, for the most part, things are recorded separately. And there is a big talent and skill, not only from the director standpoint, voice director, but the editor to make it not to make it feel like everybody was together. And that's why you come back and do scenes over and over again. Billy Crystal does a great ad lib. It's taken something in a new direction. So now we have to adjust the lines, but that's the fun. That's not a problem. Billy Crystal's great ad libs is not, a, is not an issue. Uh, the issue is it just got better. And now we have to elevate everything back, you know, take everything up with it. Mm -hmm. So um, you mentioned that the myth card in particular was something that had been conceptualized in the past, but just kind of didn't have a place for it in any of the movies. For the new monster designs, did you go back to any of that old concept art and see what you could use or is it all uh, from scratch? Oh, and just to be clear, Zach, the Mift was original to this. That wasn't part, it was the Mift cart, the cart they right. the design. The designs of the new characters, you know, we looked very closely, especially at the Monsters Inc. designs to make sure they felt like it was same, the same world and also paid attention to what kind of species exist in this world. So you'll notice Val has a little bit of art influence in that he, she's this, this arc. Um, but it was super important for me that each of these characters have a distinctive silhouette. Um, so when you see them, just a silhouette, you know who they are. So we were looking for something for Tyler that was very identifiable. So having these horns that, very white horns, okay, that, has, that hadn't been done. And then four eyes on our character who's like kind of the sneaky one, that, you know, that makes a nice silhouette. Cutter is actually kind of our, our tough union, uh, you know, character who's, you know, kind of a little bit by the book, but like, you know, but, you know, just tough. She's like a safety cone shape. That was, she, we immediately go, she's a safety <laughs> cone. Um, and exoskeletal too, right? Um, and so, um, and then Val, we wanted to make sure she's starting to curve against Tyler's angle. You know, it's like the straight against the curve. And um, she's the sort of, you know, the, the buoyant one that wants to bring the group together. So, and of course, and Fritz is sort of like the, the um, near retirement, lovable, um, you know, boss who's very settled into his chair, you know? So yeah, so it's just a lot of fun, but you know, you really think about, and Tim, I'll tell you Zach, one of the first things we did with the crew was we went to a power plant, um, two power plants actually, to walk the power plants, see how they work, uh, meet the people who work there, talk about their day, because you want to tether everything to truth. I can't, you can't make a movie about a power plant if you haven't walked one. Otherwise, you're just making stuff up. Absolutely. Well, Bob's, thank you so much uh, for your insight. Thank you so much for the show. And thank you so much for this, all of the work that you've done over the decades. I'm a huge fan, and it's a real treat to get to talk to you. Well, thanks, Zach. I appreciate it. I hope I'm, I'm super, super proud of this.